Philadelphia were New York, etc., etc. So now we are not just the 150 congregations that are involved already. We're reaching out and trying to organize more congregations so that we can be the powerful group of faith leaders that can make the change and make this a state that works for all of us. Right now it doesn't, you know that. And right now there's a real significant threat. But we're working together, praying together, serving together. We believe that Oh, really? We're already the okay. biggest oh, this voice in the state, but we believe we can yeah. be the faith gotcha. voice that allows us, not just allows us, encourages us, forces us, sends us to make a difference for those people in this state, particularly those who feel the pain most. Amen? Amen. We're glad to be here. Thank you for working with us, and let's keep inviting others. Amen. Thanks, Reverend Katie. Councilman Amber to introduce you our next speaker, the Reverend Dr. Martin Otto Zimmerman, who is the Senior Director of Continuing Education and also serves as the Executive Director of the Stewardship of Life Institute and as Adjunct Faculty of the United Lutheran Seminary right here in Gettysburg. So we're not all coming from Philly. <laughs> Dr. Zimmerman. Hey, Will. Say welcome to all our siblings from Philadelphia and points east, west, north, and south. To my local siblings here in Gettysburg, you know as well as I do what this square has witnessed in the past decade. The signs that we held, the statements we made, the pushback we received. It's all that much more important that we are here today to stake a claim for democracy, for Amen. the right of our country people to vote, for the right of people to love who they love, for the right of people to make the decisions under the advisement of their doctor. Now we are told that President Abraham Lincoln put the finishing touches on a short speech in the upstairs bedroom of that house 160 or so years ago. He ended this short message with the words that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, mm -hmm. shall not perish from the earth. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Lincoln did not say a government of the wealthiest few, by the privileged minority, for the so-called elite. This is why we are here today in the shadow of the Wills House to honor these words and to rededicate ourselves to the proposition that all of us, regardless of any adjective used to describe us, are equal partners in this democratic republic. Yes, sir. It goes without saying that this has not always been the case. Our nation's history is all too often the story of some people being more equal than others. Some people being dehumanized, commodified, and exploited to exalt the few instead of serving all. The road we walk together is replete with examples of how we creatures of anxiety have made decisions based on our fears instead of our compassion and empathy for others. In our current marketplace of ideas and social discourse, we are beguiled by the algorithms of social media platforms driving us into silos of righteous indignation and moral outrage, blinding our ability to see God in the face of our neighbors. White conservative Christians have conflated faith and patriotism in an effort to revive fascist tendencies in our culture, using this, using this current ethos of vitriol and fear. It's nothing new. 
In the 1930s and 40s, Father Charles Coughlin used a radio show to reach 30 million citizens in a country of 120 million with messages of anti-Semitism and abolition of political parties, openly questioning the value of elections. Sound familiar? Yes. As it is written in Ecclesiastes, and say it with me, there is nothing, nothing new under, under the, the sun. sun of the people, by the people, and for the people, all the people. In a world where we are in right relationship with God and with each other, this is possible. When we cast aside the fears that separate us from our neighbors and instead embrace God's love for humanity, we begin to understand how all of us are connected, how everyone is a neighbor, regardless of the differences that seek to pull us apart. When we are empowered to love, we are free to live in humility without fear. As it is written in the Christian Testament, perfect love casts out fear. Glad somebody knows that. My friend and colleague, Dr. Vincent Evaner, who couldn't be with us today, wrote in a sermon last week, to be humble isn't to think ourselves nothing in God's eyes, let alone to tell others that they are nothing. But to be humble is to know that we're something, and to tell others that they are something. We are all something, not something of our own making, but something of God's making. Not something more than others, but something with others. Our deepest failing is that we fear our lives have no meaning. The most vile sin is that we try to build meaning by reducing others. We must resist those whose ideology is built on a sense of entitlement and the misapplication of sacred texts to suit an exclusive political agenda. The path of resistance is not through violence, lest we become the very thing we wish to eradicate from our culture. The path of resistance is through the power of the spoken word, the power of the vote cast in the ballot box, the power of seeing the face of God in all people, even those with whom we have little or nothing in common. The power of disavowing our fears for the sake of embracing empathy and humility. As people of faith, we are called to love God, but Dorothy Day reminds us that we really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. Words to be shamed by. We've all heard about replacement theory in the news. The idea that some of us are coming to replace those who think they are the rightful arbiters of resources and power. I'd like to end by proposing a new and better replacement theory. Instead of fearing the other, I want to pray to God to remove and replace those parts of me that keep me from seeing my neighbor as God sees them. Mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is a replacement theory that we should live with. This is the replacement theory that we are called to live in from day to day. We are children of common ancestors. We are beloved children of one God. Let that replacement theory be our guiding principle as we commit ourselves to this democratic republic of the people by the people and for the people for the people god be with you god bless you assalamu alaikum shalom alaikum Church, 
is also the co-chair of the Live Free Criminal Justice Team of Power. Dr. Tyler. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Noonan, and to um, Dr. Zinman, and to Reverend Kane, and to Elder DeBose. Thank all of you as well for uh, making my role easy. I also serve right now as the interim director of the Civic Engagement Team for Power, and we have been working tirelessly. Thank you to all of you who have made telephone calls, who have canvassed and knocked doors, who have sent out postcards, text messages, whatever you have done to make sure that persons come out to vote on November the 8th if you have not yet voted early. Uh, Dr. Zinman, you really uh, left off where I wanted to begin uh, with your prayer. Thank you. I mean, really. Because something has been sitting within me uh, the entire ride down today from Philadelphia, and I wondered why until I heard the end of your prayer. So first of all, it's Thanksgiving, uh, Halloween on today. Uh, and so tonight, people will dress up with scary masks. They will try to scare little children. Uh, they'll do everything they can within their power to make it a frightening night. But if you've been watching the news, if you've been following the stories, these are already frightening times. We don't need a special day set aside because things have been terrifying us. In the words of the question that we began to ask when power was founded over 10 years ago, we sent members of our congregations out some of the folk who are here remember this, and we asked people, what keeps you up at night? Mm -hmm. What yes, we heard back then were the same things we hear today. Food insecurity keeps me up at night. The thought of whether or not I'll have a roof over my head, it was one thing 10 years ago, it's now something else when rent has gone up 50 and 100%. Crime, gun violence in my community keeps me up at night. Can my child have a quality education because of the zip code that my child was born into. Don't worry, you don't need Halloween. Some of us have Halloween 365 days a year. Mm. And yet, as we stand in this hallowed and sacred place of Gettysburg, I'm reminded that this country once again met a scary time. Yeah. What would have happened if that day had turned out differently? Mm. I don't think we realize how fragile this democracy is and how perilously close we came yes. to a moment in a world where I would not be on this microphone standing here, mm. but I might still be the property of someone else, like my ancestors from Virginia and from Arkansas and South Carolina and all the other places that my family comes from. That's how close we came. We've had scary times before. Yeah. And I can only imagine, Dr. Zinman, and for the rest of you who may live in areas like this, who hold the values that we hold, how frightening it must be and how alone you must feel at times. But I've got good news. Mm -hmm. What was wrestling in my spirit on the way down was remembering the prophet who woke up one morning because he often was a truth teller. If I, there were a uh, Freedom Express in his day, Elisha may have been on it himself, mm -hmm. running around, getting in trouble, talking from a bullhorn, speaking truth to power. But he woke up one morning and discovered that all his truth telling got him in trouble with the authorities. Mm -hmm. And his entire house was surrounded. Mm -hmm. And his servant cried out, man of God, we're surrounded. The gig is up. It's all over. But his prayer was what Dr. Zinman prayed. Open his eyes. Mm. He said, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he might see what's really outside. Mm. And he went back out and he saw that the entire host that had surrounded them was in fact surrounded by the Lord's army. Mm. Chariots of fire that had surrounded him to reassure him that in spite of what they said, that there were always more of them than more of the others. And I want you to know that wherever you live, whether it's Gettysburg or Harrisburg or Lancaster or in forgotten neighborhoods in Allentown and Reading or in parts of Philadelphia that electeds don't come by in places like that, that God is still with us. Yes, sir. And instead of us running in fear of the scariness, whether it be Halloween or MSNBC or Fox News or whatever, that the prayer must always be, God, open our eyes. Mm -hmm. Open our eyes and remind us that we've not been called to have a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Open our eyes and remind us to go to the polling place on November 8th without fear of intimidation. Open up our eyes and remind us 
that there are people in this country who still love justice, who still love freedom, who can agree to disagree and yet still live in peace and harmony. Open our eyes and remind us that we've got to take agency of the freedom that we have been given. Open our eyes and remind us that one vote still makes a difference. Don't let us live in despair. Don't let us give in to depression, but open our eyes. Yes, sir. So thank you, Dr. Zinman. We are here with you. We're here together. And I pray that God will open all of our eyes that we can see across this great commonwealth that there are more of us who love freedom and justice than those who would oppose it. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Dr. Tyler. Thank you, Dr. Zinman. Thank you, Dr. Reverend Kane and Elder DeBose. Y'all have heard um, people speaking truth to power, and before we conclude here, I want to give you an opportunity, an opportunity to do the same thing. So I'm going to ask you a question, and if you can get behind this, I invite you to respond with, we're healing our democracy. I'll ask you another question, and if you can get behind it, I'll ask you to respond with, we're building love and justice too. So what are we doing here, you, me, and let's see. What are we doing here, you and me? We're healing our yeah, democracy. democracy. What are we doing here, you and me? We're healing our democracy. What are we doing here, you and me? We're healing our democracy. What are we doing here, you and me? We're healing our democracy. What does your faith call you to do? Build Bil more love and power and justice too. What does your faith call you to do? Build, build more, more love and, and justice, justice too. too. What does your faith call you to do? Build more love and justice too. Louder, what does your faith call you to do? Build more love and justice too. One more time, what does your faith call you to do? Build your love and justice too. Peace, shalom, shalom. 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 Last time. Peace, shalom, shalom. Peace, amen. Go in peace.